Hey book lovers, Victoria here and you're watching My Books and Me and today I'm bringing you my winter book haul. Quite a few books for the last three months, not gonna lie, but still very excited for all of them so let's just dive right in. So the first book is actually one I picked up in Geelong at the beginning of May. Um, and I'd already filmed my previous haul by the time I got this. Anyway, the point is, so the book I got is two short stories, unfinished stories from Missing Australians. Uh, this is put out by the Missing Persons Advocacy Network. When I was in Geelong, I got to hear Lauren O'Keefe, the founder of Miss of um, MPEN, speak. So um, this book is a whole bunch of stories, unfinished stories. Um, of missing persons. Um, it's set out really, really beautifully. It's like a coffee table book kind of thing. Um, and there's a lot of uh, artwork for each of them. Um, I think there's like 12 or something in here. There's not many, like considering there are so many Australians missing. Um, there's not many stories, but it is meant to sort of shine a light on missing people. Uh, you took your eyes off her for a second and she was gone. You feel sick, adrenaline floods your body, unthinkable visions race through your mind until you find her. But what if you never did? Over 38,000 Australians are reported missing every year. Each one loved, each one so much more than the vital statistics they're reduced to on the news. Brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, children, every person who goes missing has a story. We hope this book helps to continue those stories. Um, I haven't actually read it yet. I flipped through it and sort of read bits in here, read, read bits and pieces here or there. Um, but it is just kind of really shocking to know that there are so many people out there who are missing and there are so many families and friends who have no idea where their loved ones are. Um, so yeah, definitely if you see this book anywhere, definitely um, pick it up because uh, it goes, like you buying the book goes towards uh, MPAN and everything they do. The next book, uh, the next book was kindly sent to me from Hatchet Australia and that is Broken Throne by Victoria Aveyard. This is the final book in the Red Queen series, which is actually a collection of stories and bonuses, bonus features and maps and things like that. I still haven't actually read uh, Warstorm yet, but I was really, still really excited to get this. Um, this has like everything. I talk about this in one of my most anticipated releases video. It kind of has everything that's meant to tie up loose ends and extra bonus short stories. Um, plus the two short stories that were previously released in the Steel Scars, Cruel, no, in the Cruel Crown collection, I think it's called. Um, I've heard mixed things about this, which doesn't like inspire me to finish this series, but I still really love the look of this series and I will finish it eventually. The next book was then kindly sent to me from Penguin Australia and that is Love Song by Sasha Wasley. This is the third book. This is the third book in the Daughters of the Outback series. It came out in back in June. I've not read the first two books but it is a companion novel series following three different sisters and this one sounds right up my street. I'm kind of annoyed that I haven't read it already because when I got it I was like, oh, yes, I need to read this but it's like, yeah. Um, there was something about Charlie, something about the way he questioned and teased her, he brought her brought her outside of herself, the way he made her crash headlong into love by, just by singing to her. At age 17, Beth Patterson was determined to study medicine at university despite the heartache of losing her mother. Tutoring Charlie Campbell worked out well, worked well with her plan, but falling in love with him sure didn't and neither did getting her heart broken when he abruptly left town. Now Charlie is a big star on the alternate rock scene. Well, Beth is a respected doctor in her hometown. When Charlie comes back to fight for the tiny community where he was raised, neither one of them can ignore the wild attraction they once shared. Beth swore no man would ever hurt her again, least of all this man, but some love songs can never be forgotten, especially when they were written for you. Um, so the other two books in the series are Dear Banjo and True Blue, and I've heard really, really great things about this, and I really hope to read it soon. Um, yeah, I just, I need to read it. The next book I picked up is Eyes on Me by Rachel Harris. This was one of my most anticipated releases. Was it for earlier this year? The end of last year? I think it was the beginning of this year. Um, I've, I've only read one Rachel Harris book and I loved it. It was so good. I read it at the start of this year. So if you go back and watch a wrap up, I talked about it. Um, but this, it just sounds like a really cute love story. Just like um, Love Song. Um, where, just, uh, I just, uh. This just sounds like a really cute love story, right up my street. Again, another book that I wish I had read already but haven't. Turn up the heat and dance. Look at the word nerd and you'll find Lily Bailey's picture. She's got one goal. First stop valedictorian, next stop Harvard. Until a stint in the hospital from too much stress lands her in the last place a klutz like her ever expected to be. Salsa dance lessons. Look up the word popular and you'll find Stone Torres. 
Torres's picture. His life seems perfect. Start the football team, small town hero, lots of friends. But his family is struggling to make ends meet. So if pitching a in at his mum's dance studio helps, he'll do it. When Lily's dad offers Stone extra cash to volunteer as Lily's permanent dance partner, he can't refuse. But with each dip and turn, each moment in hand is each moment her hand is in his, his side job starts to feel all too real. Lily shows Stone he's more than his impressive football stats and he introduces her to a world outside of study and he introduces her to a world outside of studying but when the but with the lines blurred can the relationship survive the secret he's been hiding very very excited I just uh, I'm just so keen for like romances like this um, very excited for this one I then picked up a copy I then also grabbed Next up is Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the first book in the Aurora Cycle series. I'm so excited for this. I really do want to finish the Illuminae Files before I get into this. But one thing I'm really excited about is that this is actually like traditional prose with some like added bonus like documents in it. So it's like the complete opposite of the Illuminae Files. But I have heard amazing things about this book with people so keen for the next book in the series. Um, and people just OMGing at plot twists and things like that. Plus the cover just looks stunning. Um, it's, it's a space soap opera. It's set in space. There are a whole bunch of awesome characters. I don't even think I need to read the blurb because you guys already know probably what this is about. But yes, it is just stunning and purple and spacey and sci-fi and awesome characters. And I'm so excited for this. Next book I picked up is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This book I am actually currently like three quarters of the way through, I think. I've been listening to the audiobook, which is amazing. Can I just say, Carrie Hope Fletcher is the narrator for the character Tiffy in the audiobook, which is amazing. Um, so this is following Tiffy and Leon, who are flatmates. They share a bed, but they've never met. Leon gets the place during the day because he works nights, and Tiffy gets the place during the night because she works days. And it's so cute and, like, so good, but also, like, just... Uh, let me read you the blurb. Tiffy and Leon share a flat. Tiffy and Leon share a bed. Tiffy and Leon have never met. Their friends think they're crazy, but it's the perfect solution. Night worker Leon occupies the one, the one bed flat while Tiffy's at work in the day, and she has the run of the place the rest of the time. But with obsessive ex-boyfriends, demanding clients at work, wrongly imprisoned brothers, and of course, the fact that they still haven't met yet, they're about to discover that if you want to feel at home, you need to throw out the, you need to throw the rule book out the window. It is so, so cute. Um, they communicate in sticky notes. It's like the cutest thing. But at the same time, while you have this cute relationship, um, you've also got Leon's brother who was wrongfully imprisoned and dealing with that. And then also Tiffy's ex-boyfriend who was kind of a manipulative jerk and just her coming to terms with the fact that that relationship was very toxic. And it is so cute. And oh, yes, uh, yeah. I'll let you know how what I think of it when I finish it. But uh, definitely check out the audiobook. The next book was kindly sent to me from Hatchet and that is... Uh, the Chosen, in, which is a book in the Contender series by Taron uh, Matharu. I've never heard of Taron. I've never heard of the his books before. Um, maybe I have, because the series is that another series by him is Summoner. But I'm pretty sure this is. Yeah, it gets confusing when they write things like when they write the um cover. Bleh. It gets confusing when they write the title of the book like this. But I think it's book is called The Chosen in the first book in the Contender series. Um, this is a this is a fantasy um, which sounds really really interesting. It's a YA novel. Cade Carter is lost. Convinced of a uh, convict Cade Carter is lost. Convicted of a crime he didn't commit, Cade is facing a year in reform school when he finds himself suddenly transported to another realm, but this new world is no escape. Populated by bloodthirsty prehistoric creatures and fierce warriors, Cade's surroundings are full of danger. Along with his fellow students, Cade is forced to become a contender in a deadly game of the highest stakes, controlled by invisible overlords. Who are these brutal rulers and why did they choose Cade? Before he can find answers, Cade must get ready to fight because in this game, failure is no option. Uh, it sounds really, really cool though. Um, as I said, I have, haven't even heard anything about this. Um, but yeah, I will say the cover isn't something that I would Im be immediately drawn to, but it does sound really, really cool. So hopefully I will get around to it very soon. The next two books were kindly sent to me from Harlequin Australia and they are so beautiful. Um, and I can't wait to read them. The first one is The Postmistress by Alison Stewart. I will say both of these are Australian novels by Australian authors set in Australia. And I think they're also both, yeah, they're both historic Australian novels, which is so exciting. Um, this cover, just, oh, 
So this one, 1871, Adelaide Greaves and her young son are found have found sanctuary in the Australian town of Maidens Creek, where she works as a postmistress. The rough Victorian gold mining settlement is a hard place for a woman, especially as the other women in the town don't know what to make of her. But through force of will and sheer necessity, Adelaide carves out a role. But her past is coming to find her, and the embittered and scarred Confederate soldier Caleb Hunt in town in search for gold, and not without a dark past of his own, might be the only one who can help her. Can Adelaide trust him? Can she trust anyone? When death and danger threaten, some some from her past, some born of the Australian bush, she must swallow her pride and join and turn to Caleb to join in her fight, a fight she is determined to win. Ah, uh, yeah, just, I've not read many like actual Australian novels, especially like more historic Australian novels, so I'm really excited for this one. And the other one is The Cinema at Starlight Creek by Ali Sinclair. Again, another beautiful cover. Queensland, 1994. When location manager Claire Montgomery arrives in rural Queensland to work on a TV miniseries, she's captivated by the beauty of Starlight Creek and the surrounding sugarcane fields. Working in a male-dominated industry is challenging, but Claire has never let that stop her pursuing her dreams, until now. She must gain permission to film at Australia's most historically significant art deco cinema located at Starlight Creek, but there is trouble ahead. The community is fractured and the cinema's reclusive owner, Hattie Fitzpatrick, and her enigmatic great-nephew, Luke Jackson, stand in her way, putting Claire's career launching project and her heart at risk. Hollywood 1950, Lena Lee, has struggled to find the break that will cat catapult her into becoming a star with influence. She longs for roles about strong, independent women, but with Hollywood engulfed in politics and a censorship battle, Lena's timing is wrong. Forced to keep her love affair with actor Reeves Garrity a secret. Lena puts her career on the line to fight for equality for women in the industry in, a, in an industry ruled by men. Her generous and caring nature steers her into a treacherous path, leaving Lena questioning what she is willing to endure to get what she desires. Can two women, decades apart, uncover lies and secrets to live uh, to live the life they dared to dream? Again, sounds really really cool. My mum is actually reading this at the moment. Actually, probably by the time. You this video goes up, she will have finished it, but she seems to be really enjoying it, and she's also excited for the postmistress as well. But this just sounds, again, really, really nice, and I'm excited to read it. Uh, Bloomsbury then sent me uh, Pan's Labyrinth, or The Labyrinth of the Fawn, by... I, I don't... I'm not even going to attempt to say his name, but the guy who actually made the film. So I've not actually seen the film Pan's Labyrinth. I've heard of it, and I did do a quick Google search just to kind of get a little bit of a feel of the film um, and what exactly it is about. Um, but yeah, never seen it. Uh, feel like I should probably watch it and then read this book. I don't really know how this book fits into the film. Um, it just says here, this enthralling novel inspired by the 2006 film illustrates that fantasy is the sharpest tool to explore the terrors and miracles of the human heart. So I don't know like if it's straight up the film in book form or if it's like an extension of it. I am or like an alternate story. I really don't know. I don't know how this fits in but I'm excited. As I, said, I, I feel like I'm going to read, I feel like I'm going to watch the film first and get a feel for the story and then hopefully I'll like the film and then read the book. Uh, but it just, this looks so beautiful. Simple, beautiful cover. Next book was kindly sent to me by Walker Books. It's actually a book that just came out and is one I talked about in my most anticipated releases and that is I Am Change by Susie Zale. Um, this, I've heard so many amazing things about this and just in general, um, I feel like this is going to be a good book. So this is a book about a girl in Uganda who kind of wants to kind of defy what her culture says women have to do. You know, they just grow up and they get married, have kids and that's it. Um, and it's sort of, if it's meant to be like about her kind of pushing the bound, pushing, yeah, pushing the boundaries of that and trying to be the change that, you know, her and women in that culture deserve. Um, on this, because this is the ARC copy, um, the blurb actually has um, a bit of a quote um, from Namuska Nuzla Sarah. So I met, and it says, I met Susie in August 2015. She was writing a book about girls like me who dreamed of wearing a school uniform. Until then, I had n never told anyone my story, not all of it. Two years later, she asked if I mind reading it. She wanted to be sure she got everything right. I read every line watching for mistakes, but after a few pages, I was lost in the story, in my story, and I cried because I was Lillian, me and my friends and the girls in my village. Everything that happened to Lillian and her friends has happened to one or all of us. This should be 
finally the last book I got uh, was a gift from my friend because she knows I'm collecting this series and she always keeps an eye out whenever she goes to a thrift shop for them and it is Charmed again this one is by um, Elizabeth Lenhard so if you don't know Charmed uh, it, there is a Charmed novelization series where I feel like it's an even split where like some of the books are direct copies of the episodes and then other books are just influenced by things and kind of slot in between episodes. Uh, so this one is actually inspired by All Hell Breaks Loose and Charmed Again. So this one is obviously when Prue dies and then Paige comes into it. And I actually already thought I had this. She sent me a photo of this because I usually give her quite a few of my books that I don't want anymore and she'll just give me like these. She sent me a photo of it before we caught up and I was like, I've already got that, damn. And then I actually looked at my bookshelf and realized I didn't have it. So, um, so yeah, I've been slowly collecting this series I've only read the first book of the whole series um, but I mean I just love Charmed so of course I wanted to collect this series and I love that one of my friends uh, knows that I love this series too and collects the books for me as well so yeah thank you Shanti okay so they are all the books that I got over winter probably not because I'm filming this at the end of July because I'm going to be busy for, through August and will not have time to film a video. Chances are I've probably also hauled books in the past month but it doesn't matter this is quite a few already. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye!